Sunday Ramble, I don't know what episode anymore, and I don't really care. How about I just not have it have an episode? Hey everybody, it's Prince of Queens, and I was gonna talk for a little bit about a number of things, but I hope you don't mind if I end up coughing a few times, because I try to do these unedited because they're pretty long in general, so yeah, I might cough. Sorry, on with the show. I was first going to talk about how Thursday is going to be my first official meetup type thing that I'm doing with Benjamin Boyce because Benjamin Boyce actually has a bigger channel than I do now, first of all, and probably more followers on Twitter. Um, And that's cool because he can help me promote and people will actually come. So if you are in the Seattle area, it is right in Seattle RSVP by writing me an email at mrprinceofqueens at gmail.com with periods between all of the words, and I will let you know the exact address. It's just one of these things where it's not in an entirely public type place, and really, we're not going to have that many people there. I want to have a guided discussion, depending upon how many people there are at the thing, it might be worthwhile for people to put down names on a list so that people can speak in turns because I just don't want shy people to feel interrupted. Now, I'm not a very formal guy. People have said that they think it's weird that I'm doing such things and I understand that entirely, but even 10 people on a live stream can make it ridiculously hard to actually talk. People interrupt each other. It's annoying and I really, really want shy people like some of my friends and people that I know in real life who are going to be coming to be able to get the chance the chance to talk and not feel like somebody is maybe going to call them stupid in the middle of it because I know how some people I know are when people say things about themselves that they normally aren't going to necessarily say which in this case will be that we live in the Seattle type area and yet we drastically don't have the far leftist, socialist, feminist, communist type politics that are in the area. I know that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be kind of nervous about talking about that because a number of people have told us that they don't really have that many friends and that it's hard to talk about such things. And maybe after a few people speak, it's going to just all hang out and it's all going to be awesome, but I feel like there's going to be people that are going to be shy. That's just my experience. And so I want to have it be conducive to those people really getting a chance to speak just because, but ultimately I want to have a lot of fun and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be some YouTubers that you guys have probably heard of, uh, or at least one that you have probably heard of outside of Benjamin and myself showing up, but I told that person that I would not be advertising that person. So yeah, come and be surprised. I think it's going to be cool. I think that Benjamin is good at facilitating conversations and interviewing people probably better than I am because I talk a little bit too much. Like, I've learned how to interview a little bit better, but there's times when I am sort of supposed to be interviewing somebody, but I just want to say something largely, and I, yeah, I would say Benjamin is a little bit better at in- interviewing than I am, even though I do, I, I, will, I will give myself some credit for the time that I interviewed the Antifa guy and the feminist I was quite nice to both of them and really gave them a chance to talk about both things that they wanted to talk about. Um, Whereas I think maybe if it's in a situation where I have a feeling that somebody's on a similar wavelength to me, then I have a tendency to talk because I'm like not like if I'm talking to somebody who's like kind of a clueless feminist that just thinks that they're a feminist because they don't don't know anything about feminism, then I'm actually really interested in hearing them speak because I want to know what's going on in their head and I can learn from them. But if somebody generally has the similar types of opinions as I do, chances are I think that I know more than them about a number of things and I can't wait to just start talking about that. And that is my own little kind of arrogance sometimes, but also sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's because I'm a nerd. 
Like, there are certain things that I know that I don't really know that much about, and I will talk to people about, you know, like, Benjamin Boyce knows a lot about university stuff, because that's what he specializes in now, not just in terms of Evergreen College, but also other universities. Like, he looks into the actual academic angle of what's going on, and he can talk about that stuff a lot. But there's, you know, stuff that I like to talk about, too. And what I want to do with this in-person meetup, one of the big things that I'm going to be really emphasizing there, and I, for the record, I don't want it to be recorded. That's, I specifically said I don't want it to be recorded. I am going to be sharing some personal details that I don't talk about on my channel. And there's, well, obviously there's reasons why. And so I'm going to be telling those details to the people that show up. And I want it to be personal in that way, you know, like to remind people that this whole, I don't know, what would they call it? The intellectual dark web? Is that what we're a part of? Well, it exists on the internet but because of the nature of how volatile it all is and how much crazy stuff can happen to you if you go against the orthodoxies of the left or even if you argue against the alt-right with any sort of potency you can get crazy internet happenings doxing swatting harassing all sorts of stuff that 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 stuff can happen so i want to to have this thing be an intimate discussion and talk about how the, there is a there is an actual you know what i do on youtube i actually take fairly seriously i do not consider my videos to be just entertainment i do consider them to be entertaining hopefully you know i try to i try to include some jokes but i'm trying to really say something and when it comes to communicating in person i also have a particular motive for everything that i think will become more clear so yeah if you're in the seattle area try to come it's on thursday um, I'm telling people to get there around seven, have meet a few people, maybe have a drink or two, and then the uh, semi-formal discussion will start at eight. So I hope that you enjoy. So I was already just talking a little bit about my arrogance or whatever and I don't even remember why I said that earlier <laughs> but uh I've I've been you know very very much trying to keep in check my arrogance recently I've talked about this on my channel in my little Sunday live streams because I realized that I made a lot of mistakes in my life just by getting arrogant like I was actually doing pretty well and I probably could have kept doing pretty well, and then I got arrogant, and then it all fell apart. And I think that that's probably a very common theme with people who end up getting arrogant about things in general. Because people, once you get arrogant, then you get sloppy. And once you get arrogant, people are also inclined to try to best you in some way. Like, if you are competing for something or other and you start getting arrogant then there's somebody or other that's going to use your arrogance as motivation to out compete you pretty much reliably right well i had this weird thing about me okay i'm just gonna back up a little bit i'm not gonna tell the story first i'm thinking about modesty and whether or not modesty is also it, it, okay so arrogance is can can definitely be detrimental absolutely but i also think that at the same time modesty is overrated and i'm not saying that in terms of myself i'm saying that in terms of some things that i've started to think about in terms of modesty doing a disservice to people around competent individuals so I've been thinking a lot about postmodernism and Marxism and how ultimately the the people that think in those terms, like the far leftist type people who think in terms of privilege and oppression, they 
really do just demonize competency. They demonize meritocracy. They just don't like it when somebody is good at something and somebody is prosperous, somebody is wealthy, somebody is talented, anything like that. They resent it, right? And one of the things that I did in my 20s and early 30s, which granted, don't get me wrong, I was very egotistical in a lot of ways, sure, but at the same time, I did try really, really, really hard to remain modest, at least in terms of my outward persona. I wanted people to believe that I was at least trying to be modest. I didn't want people around me to think that I was one of these arrogant, annoying people that thought I was all that because I made a lot of artistic work and I was particularly competent at doing things that other people couldn't do. I was an electronic producer and not just was I an electronic producer that could make electronic music, but I produced many, many different types of music. Like I was not just making house music or hip hop music. I was making both and other things. I was also making drum and bass. And, you know, generally people would say that none of my songs were completely crappy, right? That's what I was like. And it's really hard to produce any type of electronic music. Like if you hear a decent song of any genre that somebody made, then that person is at least semi-talented because producing electronic music is one of the hardest things that exists intellectually. It's just really, really hard to do. So I was doing that, but I also didn't want anybody to think that I was arrogant. So I was constantly being self-deprecating and I did this other thing, which, you know, to, to sort of, well, while I was egotistical to a certain degree about certain things, I would also, I didn't want people to feel uncomfortable around me. So one of the things that I would do would be that I would tell everybody that I was privileged and basically say, oh, well, you know, I'm just lucky. And the reason that I do these things is because I'm lucky, blah, 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 blah. And... I think that at the time, people probably liked me more because I was like that, because nobody likes feeling inferior to the people around them in any way, right? So I was probably a bit more pleasant to be around by being self-deprecating and saying that, oh, I just got lucky. But what I've started to realize, and this comes mainly as a result of not just thinking about these things in further depth, but also as a result of interacting with people that I knew at the time who honestly never thought deeply about just how hard what I was doing was and how much of it I really did. You know, like people I knew in person who I considered fairly decent friends in numerous instances who knew that I made a lot of music, but I think that they just were kind of, I, I hate using this phrase, but let off the hook in terms of thinking about how hard it was to do what I was actually doing because of the fact that I was telling them that I'm privileged. So these are people who were honestly, looking back on it, very non-productive, not really very talented, and then they were around somebody like me who was extremely productive and was fairly talented, and I was telling them, oh, well, you're don't worry, you're just as good as I am. You're just as good as I am. I just got lucky. I, you know, I'm, I'm privileged. Don't feel bad. And I realized it's kind of selfish of that, of me, for me to do that, to tell them, oh, it's, it was just privilege because I didn't want them to think that I was arrogant. I didn't want them to think that I was egotistical. And it was only because I wanted them to like me and it was almost like I was doing them a disservice because I'm sorry, sorry, not sorry, but sorry, not sorry. But somebody needs to tell people at a certain point, like if somebody says, wow, your music is really good. Wow, you've sure made a lot of it. How'd you do it? Somebody needs to say, um, 
by literally spending six to eight hours by myself in my room every day for about three years straight. Or so, I mean, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but uh, not always. No, not always. There is many, many six, eight, ten hour days by myself just on my computer. And it's way different than when you're doing um, YouTube type videos like video commentary I can at least interact with people like I at least go on Facebook and Twitter and find new articles and learn about stuff and think about things but when you're doing electron when you're doing electronic music it is just you the computer screen the noises and all the little effects and you know mathematics and it's so much more complicated than it sounds when you hear it. And that's all it is. Like, you're not interacting with anyone. And there's no good way to interact with anyone. Like, there's very few people that you can work with on music and trade off back and forth with electronic music. And if you find one of those people and you work well together and you make good music, never stop being friends with that person because that's an amazing, amazing thing to happen. For the most part, people cannot stand being in the same room as somebody that's making electronic music because it doesn't really sound like music most of the time. It sounds like, you know, somebody going, like, as you like try to, you know, well, at least the type of music that I was making, which it was all visually, like I was, I was doing it on a graph and yeah, so nobody was going to sit around in the room with me and observing just how difficult it was to do what I was doing and just how long it took to do what I was doing. So there was all these completely boring, vapid, non-productive, non-talented people who I would run into at parties and for my own reasons of wanting people to like me, I was just telling them, Oh, well, you know, I am privileged and I, 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 I don't know. I basically got lucky. Uh, uh, and um, I wasn't entirely like that, but there needs to be a balance. Like there needs to be people who make it clear that certain things are difficult and that if you want to do certain things, you are going to have to work. Because I don't think that that gets taught well enough. Like, I think that there's a lot of people that really, really think that they can just be music stars or film directors or, you know, anything semi-interesting and that it, it could it could potentially happen for them because of the fact that there's so many stupid celebrities out there and they figure, oh, well, if that person can do it, well, then I can do it. And it's like, no... No, you know, Paris Hilton is a DJ, but it doesn't mean that she's actually in the same league as people who've actually really worked hard to be DJ producers and have gotten famous that way. So, yeah, like, where do you find the balance between being virtuously humble and not lying to people about how hard it is to do the things that you do? I don't really know. I don't really have a super great answer to that question, but I think that it's really worth asking. Finally, I just want to talk about stress eating a little bit. Um, I am going to go to the Wendy's by my house in a second because I can walk there and I've been stress eating uh, due to just, you know, personal life stuff that it's, it's starting to, you know, get better and things are being a little bit less stressful. But I was stress eating and I drank, you know, I, I, I mostly only drink like two or three times a month, but I drank probably like three or four times within the past two weeks, which is like a big no-no for me. I'm kind of mad at myself for doing that. And what I've noticed is that it's so easy to get into bad habits. Like I am 36. I don't really have a lot of time to exercise and I don't really have a lot of money to go to the gym or to go to the pool anyway. So I have to try to eat really healthy is like one of the main things or I will get fat because I, I I easily get fat. It's not hard for me to gain weight and I'm at, a, I'm at an okay weight right now. You know, I'm not skinny by any means, but I'm not fat. I'm definitely not fat. And I have a tendency to want to potentially stress eat, but then I think I realize this is, and I'm just going to close out with this because I don't have that much to say besides this. 
I mostly just started eating things that I wanted to eat to make my, myself feel better about being stressed out. And then now I'm just kind of like, I keep, I, I still want to eat the junk food. <laughs> I developed a taste for it, even though I'm not all that stressed out anymore. And I think I'm maybe going to do that right now. <laughs> all right. That's, I love how that's, I thought that the stress eating thing was maybe going to be like an actual subject of conversation for me to have with myself on my YouTube channel, but it's actually not that interesting. I, um, largely it was just a segue for me to like actually leave and go to the Wendy's. I wonder what I should get. Should I get some of those like weird bacon fries or whatever? I don't know. I, I'll see. Talk to you guys later.